Rope Tornadoes, the beginning and the end. Rope tornadoes are the most common shape you'll see in tornado footage. They're long, narrow, and look like a twisting rope dangling from the sky. Despite their smaller size, they can still cause significant destruction. Rope tornadoes usually appear in the early or late stages of a tornado's life cycle. When a storm is just beginning to spin, the funnel starts small because the rotation hasn't fully strengthened yet. As the tornado matures, the pressure drop intensifies, and the funnel can grow wider. But when it starts to weaken, the circulation loses strength, and the funnel narrows again, forming that iconic rope shape as it dissipates. Interestingly, a rope tornado can still contain wind speeds over 100 miles per hour, enough to flip cars or tear roofs apart. Their slim appearance doesn't mean they're harmless. It simply reflects the weakening or forming stage of the larger tornado system. Cone Tornadoes – The Classic Funnel Cone tornadoes are what most people imagine when they think of tornadoes. The funnel widens as it extends downward, giving it a distinct cone shape that's wider at the base than at the top. This happens because the rotation in the lower atmosphere strengthens more than the rotation near the cloud base. The inflow of warm, moist air at the surface pulls the funnel outward, creating that flared shape. Cone tornadoes often mark the mature stage of a storm, when the tornado has fully developed and is at its most stable in terms of structure. They can range from a few hundred yards to nearly a mile wide. Many strong tornadoes begin as cone shapes before evolving into something even more dangerous. Wedge Tornadoes – The Giants of the Plains The wedge tornado is the monster of the tornado family. These are massive, dark funnels that can span more than a mile across, often appearing so wide that it's hard to tell where the tornado ends and the sky begins. Wedge tornadoes form when the rotating updraft, known as the mesocyclone, becomes extremely large and organized. The storm's inflow is powerful and consistent, feeding huge amounts of warm, moist air into the vortex. This causes the condensation funnel to expand horizontally, creating a wide, blocky appearance. These tornadoes are often the most violent, with EF4 or EF5 strength winds exceeding 200 miles per hour. Famous examples include the 2013 El Reno tornado in Oklahoma and the 1997 Jarrell, Texas tornado, both known for their enormous width and devastating power. Stovepipe tornadoes, perfect cylinders of destruction. Some tornadoes appear almost perfectly vertical, resembling a stovepipe. These are called stovepipe tornadoes, and they typically occur when a strong tornado maintains a consistent width from the cloud to the ground. They're often in the mature stage of development and can quickly evolve into wedges if the storm continues to intensify. The even structure of a stovepipe tornado means the vortex is well organized, with strong, steady inflow feeding the rotation from all sides. Many of the most photogenic tornadoes ever captured fall into this category because of their clean, symmetrical shape against the stormy sky. Multi-vortex tornadoes. Tornadoes within tornadoes. Some tornadoes don't just have one funnel. They have several smaller ones spinning around a central core. These are called multi-vortex tornadoes. They look chaotic, with multiple suction vortices tearing across the ground in unpredictable patterns. Multi-vortex structures occur when small-scale rotations, called subvortices, form inside the main circulation. Each of these mini-tornadoes can produce extreme localized damage, even stronger than the average wind speed of the larger funnel. That's why you sometimes see one house completely destroyed while another right next to it is barely touched. It depends on whether one of those subvortices pass directly over it. Satellite Tornadoes – The Companions Occasionally, you'll see two or more tornadoes spinning close to each other. The smaller one orbiting the main funnel is known as a satellite tornado. Satellite tornadoes form when a nearby area of rotation, often triggered by the same parent thunderstorm, spins up alongside the main vortex. They can rotate in the same or opposite direction and may merge or drift apart depending on the storm's structure. These secondary funnels can cause extra damage paths and confuse storm chasers since they might appear like one giant rotating system from a distance. Landspouts – Tornadoes without supercells Not all tornadoes come from supercells. Landspouts are weaker tornadoes that form differently usually under fair-weather cumulus clouds, rather than huge thunderstorm. 
They occur when surface-level wind shear causes a small rotation that's stretched upward by rising air. Because they don't have the deep organized structure of supercell tornadoes, landspouts are usually narrow and short-lived. But they can still pack strong winds capable of damaging property and flipping vehicles. They often appear as thin, dust-filled columns and can form quickly with little warning. A reminder that not all tornadoes fit the same mold. Gustnadoes. Tornado. Lookalikes. Sometimes, people mistake gustnadoes for real tornadoes. Gustnadoes are small, short-lived whirlwinds that form along the leading edge of a thunderstorm's gust front. They're caused by horizontal wind shear but don't connect to the cloud base, meaning they're not true tornadoes. Still, they can look striking. Spinning columns of dust or debris that last for a few seconds or minutes. While they lack the structure and strength of a real tornado, gustnadoes demonstrate how unstable the boundary between storm outflows can be. Why tornado shapes change over time? A single tornado can transform through several shapes in just minutes. It might begin as a rope, widen into a cone, evolve into a wedge, and then thin back down as it dissipates. These changes reflect the tornado's life cycle and the balance of forces within the storm, updrafts, downdrafts, and inflow strength. When the inflow weakens or the storm's energy shifts, the tornado loses stability and its shape distorts. Photographs taken minutes apart often show completely different forms, which is why storm chasing requires experience and constant attention to detail. What tornado shape can tell us about strength? While shape gives clues about structure, it's not always a reliable indicator of strength. Some narrow tornadoes can still be violent EF4s, while some wide ones might only have moderate winds. Meteorologists rely more on radar data damage surveys and wind speed estimates than shape alone. However, large, well-organized wedge tornadoes often signal high energy and strong rotation, meaning they're more likely to be catastrophic. So next time you see tornado footage, remember, the shape is like a fingerprint of the storm's internal dynamics. It tells a story about how air, temperature, and pressure interacted to create one of nature's most powerful forces. The role of environment and terrain. The local environment plays a big role, too. Tornadoes over flat plains, like in Kansas or Oklahoma, often have clean, full shapes since the airflow is unobstructed. In contrast, tornadoes forming in hilly or forested areas can have distorted funnels as the terrain disrupts the inflow. Humidity and temperature also affect visibility. A moist environment makes condensation visible, while drier air can hide the funnel even when violent winds are present. The beauty and danger. Behind every shape, each tornado shape represents a balance of chaos and order, a temporary masterpiece created by physics. From the thin ropes that dance across fields to the monstrous wedges that darken the horizon, tornadoes remind us how small we are in the face of nature's raw power. Meteorologists continue to study these shapes to improve warnings and understand storm behavior better. Every photograph, radar scan, and eyewitness report adds a piece to the puzzle.